With Manitoba in the rearview mirror, we are entering Ontario, the most populous province in the country of Canada, home to the Toronto Blue Jays, the Raptors, the CN Tower, the Niagara Peninsula, and although it has some of the largest centers and cities in the country, it is home to Canada's capital of Ottawa. There's a large part of Ontario that remains untouched. Vast swaths of the Canadian Shield, some of it very inaccessible. How far can we go? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get into the weeds to answer that very question. So hang on, it's time to go into Ontario and get totally trucked up. We're here. We've entered cabin country. The Mecca for those trying to escape it all. Kenora borders the shores of Lake of the Woods. Known for its scenic beauty and in the fall, amazing hues. We're here for our first trucked up stop where we'll be popping in to Iron and Clay Coffee House to talk everything trucked and electrification. And what an idyllic spot for our first foray into Ontario. We've got good news and we've got bad news here in Kenora. A little bit of a problem if you're traveling here and you can't access one of these because this right now is the only active fast charger in Kenora. This is a major center coming right through on the Trans Canada and this one other DC fast charger and it's been down since May. It looks like nobody's cared to service it. I read through the plug share comments, a lot of frustrated people who have traveled here, seen it up as available. Now they've just had a almost perpetual under repair stamp on it on plug share. It's really unfortunate, especially for such an idyllic, beautiful, tourist attraction that's going to bring bring people from both Canada and United States. A couple of interesting things just happened. When I entered in my next destination with Ford Navigator, it went from giving me a range of 377 on 90% charge, recalculated and gave me 450. It's now shown me that the entire time in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, it was attempting to compensate for weather conditions because now we've got no wind and I'm going to be driving at slower speeds. It's going to be very terrain and it's saying you're going to do great for range. What a dramatic change in 24 hours. We are already touching upon the Canadian Shield, but where are we off to next? Everyone talks in Ontario about Thunder Bay, kind of being the northern end of Ontario. But Thunder Bay is kind of like Prince George in British Columbia, something I chatted about in that video. It's not north, so I thought, how much further north can we go and be able to do it in an electric truck? Well, 500 kilometers north of Thunder Bay is the community, the township of Red Lake. And we're going to go up and see it because we can. The good news is I've got 268 kilometers from Kenora because if you look on a map, I don't have to go as far north as I do for Thunder Bay to get to Red Lake. So we're gonna go for it. Even better news, they have a DC fast charger. And I checked on PlugShare and it's got like a 10 rating, which means it's always running. Reliability, consistency, frequency. Kinda like, what am I thinking of? Uh, gas stations. This is a really beautiful part of the freaking world. And you know what's really cool? I've never been here. I'm cursed. I leave Kenora, drive 25 kilometers, you know, 18 miles or so. Ground starts to rise up, beautiful lakes everywhere, gorgeous. I got freaking hit by a headwind right in the face. Huge gusting wind. 40 kilometers later, ah, the nice little range that Ford gave me. Here, have some range. You're gonna get close to your EPA. Oh, no, no, you can't have that. You, you, you're driving in places we don't like, so we'll take that back. It shows I got 301 kilometers of range and 189 to Red Lake. There's no chargers to get to outside of 
uh, Red Lake. If there's a problem in Red Lake, I have a problem. There's a charger that I have to get to coming back in Dryden, Ontario, but I don't go through Dryden. So there's only one charger really that I'm gonna get to. I mean, there's lakes and wetlands and oh, it's, yeah, I just love it. It's absolutely beautiful, but there's nobody. We're 15 kilometers away from our turnoff and I'm guessing there's gonna be something. Why? The billboard showed up again. I just arrived in Vermilion Bay. It's the junction to head on up to Red Lake. There's a lot of check your fuel level, limited services signs everywhere, including for a place called Ear River or Ear Falls and Red Lake. This doesn't bode well for me because in Vermilion I went to get a coffee. The cafe is closed for the season, the restaurant's closed for the season, the motels are closed for the season, the hotel's closed for the season. Basically the entire place is closed for the season. Everything's shut down October 1st. I'm hoping that's not the case in Red Lake. When I had planned this trip in advance, I called to many of these campsites because my plan was not to use a lot of hotels. The plan was to actually use campsites. I got all my camping gear in the back. They're all closed for the season, which kind of makes sense being that I'm already in October. There's a couple of RV spots that are open, but the ones that I called said, sure, yeah, we're open. I told them when I was planning on coming through. I don't think it clicked. Many of the places I planned on staying are all closed. So it's hotels, which increases my costs hugely. But we're just gonna drive to Red Lake and see what happens. And hopefully the uh, fast charger is up and running. Because if it isn't, <laughs> closed for the season. That's my new threat. Since leaving Vermilion Bay, it's been paradise. Absolutely gorgeous landscape. It is just kilometer upon kilometer stretching off into the distance of forest but what's really cool is that forest is interspersed with innumerable number of lakes and a lot of them aren't small there's little ones there's big ones there's stretched ones there's fat ones there's skinny ones there's every kind you can think of there's a lot of hunting lodges there's a lot of fishing lodges a lot of that kind of stuff all the way up here every 10 or 15 kilometers i'll see a sign for another lodge and i can understand why so if you love boating if you want to canoe if you love getting out on a quiet lake and just canoe for hours or days heck you could stay here all summer long and you'd never find a fraction of all the lake there's been a couple of times that i wanted to film more of it for you but I, every time i have to keep moving my gopro around and that means pulling over resetting it testing it going back on the road and seeing okay did that work and then sometimes i get confused about where i stuck the bloody thing i go by this massive lake i backed the truck up i took another second run at it so i could get a nice slow one on the gopro my gopro is pointing straight ahead missed all of it I need a second GoPro for sure for trips like this. Please help out any way you can. If not, hey, I'll get there. We'll get there. Just maybe a little bit longer down the road. Right now, it's just not in the cards for affordability. But when I get back, I'm hoping for the spring with more options for more angles to get you more good content. And a drone? Well, I am going to be taking drone flying lessons. So that gives you a hint about where that's going. I have arrived into the municipal district or municipal county, the municipality of Red Lake. Population here, 4,700. It's an amalgamation, I believe, of five or six different municipalities. There's no small area with 4,700 people calling it home. There's not a lot going north beyond it. One of the other important things about Red Lake is its goal. In 2004, I may stand corrected on this, was considered the largest gold deposit in the world. It's also the gateway into Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. There are so many interesting things about Red Lake, I just have to come up here and see it. Is it a bit of a risk? Yeah, one charger, and then goes wrong with it. But also if you have more traffic, you're waiting for one charger and that one charger is 50 kilowatt. But then there's this, it's got a charger. And I'm thrilled about it because that means I can get here. And if there is a problem, there's 4,700 people, I think might be able to help me out with a solution. Made it to the Water Buffalo Cafe 
and bakery happy about this we're gonna pop in see if anybody's popped by and then we're gonna get back on the road and try to make our way back to Thunder Bay good news pulled up easy to find plugged in ran my app bang we started charging immediately it's just after 4 p.m that i was going to walk around red lake and really check it out and and you know get a feel for the place well i'm going to have time to do that and the reason that i'm going to have time to do that is although PlugShare listed this as a 50 kilowatt and ford listed it as a 50 kilowatt location i just looked at the machine it's 25 kilowatt I can't even use the word fast for this. It just means my arrival at Thunder Bay is going to be insanely late. It's a seven hour drive from here and it's already 4 p.m. So I think you can do the math. My previous tour videos of Saskatchewan and Manitoba talked about what could happen for travelers unlike the lucky ones like me who could access a Tesla supercharger and the effect that it could have on your time that you can still get from one place to another but you're going to get there very very late this is a prime example of this but I want to mention something these things are installed with really good intentions this was probably done by the community center by the municipality and thinking this is really going to advance things by having a a DC fast charger to assist people make the transition to electric vehicles and that's a wonderful intention and that's exactly what we need but at the same time they may not be aware of the requirements of time versus kilowatt like how much has to go into one of these things to minimum minimally make them a worthwhile endeavor this is a two hour wait exactly two hours we plugged in at 407 p.m and it's currently 6.07 p.m. and we have a cushion of about 30 kilometers between here and the Dryden Tesla supercharger. I'm going for it. So much for my tourist time in Red Lake. Knowing that I was going to be here for two hours and mean that I'm gonna arrive in the wee hours for my hotel stay in Thunder Bay, I used the time wisely and I got a lot done. And that means when I get to the hotel at two o'clock in the morning or whenever it is that I arrive, I'm just gonna crash. This morning, I woke up in the beautiful Super 8 East in Winnipeg, went downstairs and had a lovely breakfast, jumped in my truck fully charged, and then I drove to Kenora, Ontario, and then I drove to Vermilion Bay, Ontario, and then I turned north, and I drove all the way in heck up to Red Lake, Ontario, and then I sat at a DC charger that's the slowest, I think, on the planet for two hours, and then I turned around, and I drove from Red Lake, Ontario, back to Vermilion Bay, Ontario, and then I turned due east, and I drove here to Dryden, Ontario, and from here, I'm gonna drive 330 kilometers to Thunder Bay, Ontario. Why? Because I'm a freaking idiot. I can justify my insanity. First of all, Canada is really freaking big. And I could have just jumped on the Trans-Canada Highway and driven right across the whole freaking country. And it still would have taken me, oh, about two weeks. But we're not doing that. If we want to find out if every single one of our provinces is trucked up, we've got to drive everywhere in those provinces to as many places as we can possibly get to to figure out what they're like. And I'm so glad that I pulled in here in Dryden because Dryden is an industrial city. It makes a lot of stuff. I don't know what it makes because I haven't had a chance to read because I've been driving solidly and Google hasn't been cooperating with me when I ask it questions like, so tell me a little bit about Dryden. The first thing it does, it finds me a whole bunch of charging stations and reroutes me. I know nothing about Dryden really. I did notice Tesla superchargers at 250 kilowatt, 85 cents a kilowatt hour Canadian. That's freaking expensive. However, every other fast charger that showed up both in PlugShare and in Google were all 50 kilowatt. When I asked it for a 100 kilowatt DC fast charger, it sent me 280 kilometers back to Kenora. Is it really wise to drive that much in a day? 
Well, not really, but I'm trying to cram in as much as we possibly can to really experience each one of these provinces. And I know when you're watching it, if you're from this area or you visited certain provinces, you're going to say, well, you missed this and you didn't go to that. And if you didn't go, I'd like to get home uh, within the year. Speaking of cramming, I arrived here with 52 kilometers of range left and we're charging pretty stinking fast. I'm at 41% already and we're clipping at 165 kilowatts and it's been going for quite a while and we need that to happen because we're only at 168 kilometers of range and we need to get to at least 300 and then we're going to try to get to Thunder Bay without having to charge a second time. There is a charger en route, but I don't want to pull over. It's going to be already stupid time of the morning. I've called the hotel to say, yeah, I'll be arriving when some people are getting up to go to the bakery. I arrived at my hotel in Thunder Bay at quarter to three in the morning. You see, it wasn't actually that bad. It was three hours, not four. However, from Dryden to Thunder Bay, I forgot there's a time change. I got four hours of sleep, headed over to my trucked up stop at Upshot Coffee this morning, and now I am off to Wawa, Ontario. And what I've discovered very early in the process is Tesla superchargers are your savior if you can use them. If you can't use them, I've been having a lot of trouble finding anything about 50 kilowatt. They all show up as Petro Canada. However, according to a local, he notified me that there's been a Petro Canada broken for years. The ones that I'm seeing are all under repair. I think there's one that's operational. That's absolutely terrible. That Petro Canada is pitching itself and promoting itself as this highway across Canada and then they're not servicing their fast chargers. I woke up to frost, minus three. I'm in Northern Ontario. It's kind of cool, literally. It's also realizing that on the way back, guaranteed, and even on the way forward, I might find myself in snow. We are heading for Nipigon, Ontario next. Now this uh, pathway that we're taking is along Lake Superior, along its Northern shores and we're gonna drive all the way down to a place called Wawa. And there's some interesting developments here. One of them, we're, I'm hoping on talking to a gentleman who I'm gonna stop in and see in Schreiber, Ontario, who happens to be a Lightning owner, standard range Lightning owner. He's got first-hand knowledge of what it's like to own a standard range Lightning, not an extended range, here in an area where Northern Ontario seems to be quite limited for its chargers. It has them, that's, that's the good part. We are in Nipigon, Ontario, halfway between Thunder Bay and our destination of Wawa. But I wanted to pop in here and give you an understanding of how essential these services are as we go. So between Thunder Bay and where I'm going, there's no other DC fast chargers other than I think there's two, both are 50 kilowatt. One of them shows under repair on PlugShare. This is again, one of the very few Petro Canada that I pulled into that's operational. Again, if you recall the last one that I charged at that said up to 200 kilowatt, it charged at 80. Uh, the one before that charged at 40. These are dicey, but at least these ones are running. Outside of Tesla, this is all you've got in Nipigon. We're here in the community of Schreiber, Ontario. Population 1,100, absolutely idyllic here on yet another small lake. We're off to Terrace Bay. I like Schreiber. It's an idyllic little community and of absolutely gorgeous surroundings. You know, you're right off of Lake Superior. You've got all these beautiful low, I'm gonna call them low hills. They might call them mountains here, uh, but I absolutely love it. And the best part about it, it being the narcissistic bastard that I am, I find it quite appealing that one of the main roads in town is, is Simon Street. I mean, how could you not like a community that's got Simon Street? We've arrived in Terrace Bay, Ontario, population 1,700 people. We've got chargers. That's not bad. But if you're not driving something where you can use a Tesla supercharger again, you're going to be waiting a while. We are gonna go check out 
Terrace Bay. I am here on the shores of Lake Superior and a gentleman reached out to me, one of my awesome trucked up viewers, who's got a Lightning himself, a standard range, and he lives in this area. So we got together, started chatting about everything trucked up, and we've got some interesting takes on what it's like living in this area with a standard range electric truck and some of the things you can or cannot do with them. So I'm joined here by Rael. Yes. Did I pronounce it yes. right? Yeah, See, Real, I'm not yeah. going to get hit. I'm doing well already. <laughs> it's all good. I thought, all good. oh, it's a French. Real. <laughs> you could know, say it like that. Okay. It sounds pretty good. <laughs> so, first of all, yes. what the freaking heck were you thinking that you go out and, hey, I live in a place where there's almost no DC fast chargers. I think I'll get an electric truck. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of a weird uh, <laughs> idea. Uh, I wanted to get rid of uh, idling in the driveway, burning gas for nothing. Yeah. And... Uh, I've been using up all this nice clean energy we make here in northwestern Ontario. and That's are, right, because you're not. it's not a coal end of things. Nope. It's not gas here. Nope. We don't even have natural gas to Terrace Bay. So, so you're more like British Columbian energy production. So you hear about always supporting the oil and gas sector, but if you want to support Ontario, it would be supporting hydro. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We have, okay. Between here and about seven kilometers away, there's a big hydroelectric station. North of Nipigon, there's three, four. But you wanted to support that. You thought, I want to support my community. Yep. Yeah. So you thought, I'll buy a truck and support the industry and the people who go to work every day. That's right. Yeah. You see hydro trucks every day, all day around here doing their thing. They do a great job. We only have power outages, very rare. But uh, Hydro One, OPG, I've, I've talked to them over the years about EVs and uh, all the sorts of stuff and they're always they react well they, they're always that, I mean that's their business they, that's they their want business. to sell power they, yeah it's like oh we're gonna run out well we're we're exporting buckets of it to the states yeah tell me a bit about winter here Is winter and cold uh yeah last year wasn't <laughs> last year was like yeah I never got cold we never had any snow no snowmobile and very little snowmobile right. I should say uh, but generally, it's it's cold. Yeah. So what did you have before this? I had a 2017 F-150 EcoBoost. Nice truck. Very nice truck. It, yeah. it was a, it towed great. It was, it was good on gas. Yeah. Um, but, but but you felt like you you said like in the mornings. Yeah. Sit watching it idle for half an hour to watching drive. your paycheck idle in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, and drive ten minutes to work, and, and then, then watch the paycheck yeah. idle at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I thought maybe we'll try something different. Have you seen a huge savings? Not really, because um, this truck, my new truck, is a lot more expensive, and um, so I pay more for payments but less for gas. It kind of washed out. But you you bought a 2022, right? Yes. And you bought kind of at the height of the oh yeah crank up price. Yeah. So yeah. you pay like, I'm not going to mention, but you pay like 10 or 12 grand more than I paid for a new flash yes. that's extended yeah. range. Exactly. Yeah. So that's tough. Yeah. But you're looking at, you're, are you going to go back to gas or hybrid when the, your lease is up? I don't think so. so yeah. Some days I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll try hybrid, but then I, I find it's either do one or the other. You're going right. to get gas or electric. Don't. Yeah. And don't. you've been looking at the Silverado EV yep. and some Silverado, of those. Yeah. And now I didn't even know about it, but with the new trims that they've yeah. pushed out. Yeah. I, th I think I might yeah. do a video on that yeah. because the yeah. prices have come way down Yep. Uh, and the trims, they now have got kind of their version of flash mm -hmm. right in between yeah. the work truck four and the RST. Yeah. Yeah. It's an LT. Yeah. And you can get the LTS also, I think with a upgrade package so you can get the mid game. Yep. Yeah. So they, back on my it's radar, making, man, it's making sense. You were one of the first to go up to Red Lake where I just went. Yep. Yeah. And, and you did it with a standard range. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> took some planning. Now you also see. Have you towed with it? Yes, I tow a 16 foot trailer. It's about 3,000, no, yeah, about 3,000 pounds, I would say, but probably closer to four with all our gear and people and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got the box full, the frunks full, the cabs full, like trailers full, like it's, it's full, like, everything's full. Yeah, and uh, we, yeah, we tow is great, just not very far. And it's hard when people ask because I'm giving them my numbers. If I had an extended range, it'd be different it'd Totally different numbers. If I had a Silverado with the monster totally battery, different. totally different. Totally different. Yeah, I mean, you're driving, yeah. now you're almost comparable in range with the Silverado uh, to a standard gas yeah. V8. Yeah. As far as how far you can go That's right. with a tow. Yeah. So as far as uh, future plans for you, you're saying, well, you know, I'm thinking about, like, maybe I'll go to a hybrid, but I think I'm going to stick electric. What's that one thing that's playing into that thought process for you? Uh, probably a couple of things. Uh, local dealership, which I have Ford and Scriber and Terrace Bay's Chevy. So I got, I got that covered. Uh, my main thing is uh, towing range. 
Um, it's one of those things you use three weekends of the year, but when you need it, you, you, you really you need, need it. it. So yeah. So when we go uh, west towards Thunder Bay, it's not so bad. We got Nipigon, Thunder Bay. It, it, that's my area. Mm -hmm. It's when I go north or east. That's when troubles happen. So north of Nip again, there's not much. You've, Up to yeah. Geraldton is the next one. Yeah. So I couldn't reach Hurst. that. Yeah. So if I'm towing, I can't reach those places. If I go in the other way, I can go to Nays, which is about 45 minutes away. And then yeah. after that, it's no man's land up to White River. So yeah. So I'm kind of, with what I have now, is just as far as I can go is my little bubble. Everyone says north is Thunder Bay. That's north. Mm -hmm. But you're talking north of north. Yep. You went to Red Lake, which is 500 kilometers north of north. Yeah. So yeah. you're, you're yeah. going out there and testing the limits of what you can do as well, like yeah. I am. But what shocked me out here, I couldn't find any 100 kilowatt fast chargers. No. Now you've got something out here that's kind of like a BC Hydro thing. What's that called? Ivy. Ivy is a baby of OPG. And what's OPG? Ontario Power Generation. So is Ontario Power Generation here government? I would say yes. I'm not sure. <laughs> is it kind of one of these joint? Yeah, there's OPG. Public-private yeah. partnership. And then companies. Hydro One. Uh, OPGs, they generate. Hydro One, they distribute. Distribute. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's part of that. Do you see the Ontario government embracing it and doing more with Ivy or less? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Staying the same. No, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Every every spring, fall, they, they say we're going to invest in the north, and these chargers are going to be everywhere. Yeah, hasn't changed. And in meanwhile, two they're years. twinning all the highways so they can get their goods and they're making <laughs> yeah. their money, shipping stuff. Yeah. But they don't. They don't. Yeah. It's infrastructure. It's not novelty. So IVs are kind of reliable, though. They're, yeah, they're pretty, pretty good. Re pretty yeah. reliable. Yeah. yeah. But dog slow. Yeah. And well, you laugh because you say dog slow. That Those are good out like here. The, for us, that's, that's, that's 50 kilowatts. That's fast charging. That's, but now you know the real world because you're now with an axe adapter using Tesla superchargers. Yeah. So yeah. now what are you charging at? Oh, like, yeah, like 170 something. Yes. Yeah. Like and for a long period of time, they, yeah. they sustain that curve for a yes, long time. They do, so yeah. you're like three to three to four times faster yeah. than the yeah. Ivy. And and reliability and reliability that's the main thing is reliability yeah. when you when we rolled up one time to to uh, i won't say the name but to a yeah. location in nipigan yeah and and the screens are black yeah. it's minus 15. so now. petro canada then yes <laughs> yeah, okay yeah i'll say it okay <laughs> yeah and, uh, the they're screen, abysmal and the screens are black yeah um it's minus 15. you still got 100 kilometers yeah. of, of winter driving yeah. you know and you call the number yeah and nobody knows what no you're one knows what talking thing. about yeah and the and the, the store and the staff are great yeah the location is great yeah just these chargers have failed are, are useless and, yeah yeah I, I always made fun of flow uh, i still do um but more so because of speed and sometimes integration problems i've had problems with the rfid code or with the app and just really dumb stuff that shouldn't happen but they're on right they're not having some kind of you know Welcome to Nipigon, where you'll be staying for the next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, the, the, so the one thing that's kind of really holding you back, you'd find for this whole area, is frequency of chargers. Yep. Reliability of those chargers. Yeah, I'd say they're... Not they're, even the speed. No, the locations are good too. Like we have them in, in all these towns. Yeah. But they're not reliable. Yeah. And the speed is okay. But usually if you're in our area, if you're traveling to, let's say, Nipigon or Marathon, we're going for a hockey tournament. Yeah. So even a good level two would be perfect. Yeah. You know, right at the hockey rink, if you had oh, like yeah. a bank of level twos at, you know, nine, 12 kilowatts or whatever, yeah. it'd be perfect. And yeah. I've been staying at amazing hotels that actually don't even have, you know, the wall unit dryer NEMA 1450. They're hardwired to the hotel. Oh, nice. And they're running at 48 amp or 80 amp. Yeah. You know, so you level two, you're done in four hours. That's right. Yeah. So you stay at a hotel, you don't even have to plug in overnight. You can just plug in, you know, pack up, do your stuff in your room, go and do stuff, uh, you know, take a shower, whatever. Come back out, you know, three, four hours later, you got a full truck. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what we need. That's, that's like, I know fast charging is great, but mm. some level twos, like good high powered level twos. Yeah. Like down here at the beach today, you know, you know, if we had a level two here, you're out taking a picnic for a couple hours, plug in. Like it, yeah. it's simple, but yeah, it, uh, that's what we're lacking is, is good fast charging reliable yep and a lot more level twos would be nice and i don't um, know if the business case is there either up here like a one time this summer i seen the tesla chargers full there was mm -hmm. six teslas charging at once yep. that's the first time 
in years of ever and I keep yes. an eye on those chargers because I love talking yeah. about EVs, but um, like the IV station's empty most of the time. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, maybe there's just not a business case yet. You but know? you can also look at it the other way around. Maybe there's no business case yet because everyone's... Yeah, the chicken and the egg. You yeah. know, the chicken <laughs> and the egg thing. You know, if you had a magic wand, if you were the king of the world, yep. three things, what would you change like right now? Bullet point. Uh, reliable, at least 100 kilowatt chargers. Um, a pile of level two chargers in, in uh, tourist kind of spots, like we talked about. It's yep. beautiful here. Yep. When I put some chargers, people can get out and walk around and take yep. a look. And? Number three, education for, for people. Um, yeah. they, 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 there's this plug and drive. I think it's out of Southern Ontario. And they, they have these beautiful big trailers that pop into town and the doors open and it educates. They never come up here. They, they stay down south. Yeah. They're doing cross Canada. Well They're not even stopping in Thunder Bay. So, I mean, when I had a gas truck, everyone teased me because I had a Ford or because of this. So now they're just teasing me about different things. <laughs> but, but, uh, right. And I mean, I always yeah. said EVs aren't perfect and they're yeah. not for everyone. If you can I find think. a vehicle that's perfect, call right. Doc from Back to the Future. Yeah. Put in your Mr. Fusion and <laughs> yeah, yeah. banana peel. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Yeah. It was well, great actually getting together. I love getting together with my, my viewers. My amazing viewers who, who actually are experiencing what I'm experiencing. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it okay. for you stopping. That was awesome. Riel had a lot of uh, insight, I think, for anybody who owns an EV truck, because what I experience and what someone else experiences in a different part of this country are entirely different. And giving the perspective of a standard range truck, I owned a standard range F-150 Lightning, but I was in the Kootenays in the mountains and my work zone was in my bubble. And he wants to expand beyond that bubble and he's limited by what his environment provides. I'm dividing this video up because Ontario's so freaking big, we're gonna do this in parts. So I wanna thank you so far for watching the Northern Ontario portion, and then we're gonna move into the rest of Ontario in the next one. So stick around, there's a lot more to come, and I've got two interviews, two of them, that I think you're gonna be very, very impressed with that will wrap up and be sometime between part one and part two once I get them produced. Thank you again for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and bell notification icon below. If you like what you're seeing, it really means a lot, and I really wanna thank you, as always, for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.